subscribe ecofan for more educational videos welcome dear learners today we are going to discuss about economics and environment the environmental economics uh, is an area of economics that studies the financial impacts of environmental policies basically whatever development we go for example the ecological impact assessment how would we change such type of policies regarding the developments that are going to impact on the environment and uh, the economics related to the uh, environment that uh, comes in the domain of environmental economics so the environmental economists uh, perform studies to determine the theoretical or empirical effects of environmental policies on the economy like whether we have to go for the dedicated that we call an uh, ecocentric wave uh, in the environmental ethics where the developmental activities are only performed where the impact on environment is less so such kind of policies how can we preserve the environment and what could be the effects of such policies on the economy so the primary focus is how to use or manage the natural resources that is particularly air water foresters or soil everything that the nature provides us maybe it is the resources that we derive from the lithosphere like different kinds of minerals so uh, environmental economics has originated in 1960s and it is one of the fastest uh, growing studies in the field of economics nowadays and uh, it has gained an increasing recognition uh like in the nature of the economics as well as uh, the formation of economic value of the resources so the day it dates back to the classical economists just like the analysis of limited land and natural resources by smith it described uh, it is described by smith and uh, ricardo as analysis of limited land and natural resources and another author named uh, Mill it uh, he describes the environmental economics as a land that not only has agriculture and extract to use but also as a source of amenity values and there are many other authors like Marshall uh, he describes the environmental economics as an analysis of externalities and market measures. So there are many kind of views what uh, the environmental economics is dealing. So to discuss the environmental in, uh, economics, we have to basically describe uh, the this subject under three main categories first one is natural resource economics then another one is environmental economics and then ecological economics so all the three domains have different areas so the modern sub disciplines of natural resource economics and environmental economics have largely distinct roots in the core of modern mainstream economics Natural resource economics emerged mainly out of neoclassical growth of economics that we are going to discuss uh, quite a detail in this lecture. So environmental economics that is out of welfare economics and the study of market failures. So ecological economics, uh, that last one is a relatively new. It comes in uh, 1980s and is an interdisciplinary that uh, is um, made of ecology and economic fields. So as we know, the eco means the household. It is basically a Greek term which is derived from the oikos. So the ecologic uh, that we study in ecological economics is basically a study of nature's housekeeping while economics is a study of human housekeeping. So how the nature manages the house that is our ecosystem that is the ecology and how the humans which have managed their economy that is called 
uh, I mean, how they manage, how the humans manage their uh, house, like their own ecosystem that is called economy. So how can we correlate these two, that is ecology and economics that is discussed under the ecological economics. So the ecological economics is a study of how these two sets, that is housekeeping by nature and the humans are related to one another. And the fundamental issues in the economic approach to the resource and environmental issues like there is a property issues, efficiency, governmental interventions, the role and the limits of valuation in achieving efficiency, time decision of economic decisions and the substituent uh, substituability and uh, irreversibility so the primary concern of environment and resource economics is the application of economic theory and methods of environmental issues and problems that require detailed analysis in order to improve the management strategies so the particular issues uh, that include the costs and the benefits of alternate environmental policy to deal with air pollution water quality toxic substances solid waste and nowadays that is quite common that is global climate change so how can we discuss the economy with relation to the environment so here the economy is assumed to depend on natural environment so any country having natural resources maybe it is in the form of the minerals it is in the form of water forest so that country is quite rich which has more kind of such natural resources like india India is very rich in natural resources. So the extraction of non-renewable resources and the harvest of the renewable resources. So how can we uh, now nowadays most of the economies have uh, shifted their uh, economy to from linear economy to the circular economy. So there is less extraction of uh, non-renewable resources and more dependence on renewable resources so the non-renewable resource like the fuel uh, fossil fuels coal natural gas nowadays technologies are going to improve day by day so that we get more energy from our like a renewable resource like solar wind geothermal tidal ocean energy thermal conversion so there are n number of the ways how can we transform our economy from linear to circular so the another point is disposal and assimilation of the wastes so whatever in the linear economy is used it at last goes to the garbage so there is a problem there is a dead end there is not a circularity in the resources we are using and the conception of environmental amenities means whatever we are consuming it is not coming back to us again like there should be a circular circularity at the point of time there uh, there will be time when such kind of resources will be uh, finished so before that point is arrived we have to change our way of living so economic activities draws resources from environment and provides flow back into the environment so how can we uh, discuss our economy and environment with respect to the laws of thermodynamics let us take an example of a food chain or any kind of ecosystem how it conserves how it implies or how can we discuss this ecosystem in terms of law of thermodynamics law of ther first law says energy and mass and material are in balance so there is energy is not created or destroyed but it's converted into another form like the producers they get energy from the plants and that energy around one to two percent that is uh, captured by the plants is converted into biomass and on, uh, on the scale on the tropic levels such energy gets uh, decreased only 10 percent of energy is transferred to the higher tropic levels in between this energy is uh, converted into the biomass it is converted into another forms of energy so there is the perfect conservation of energy it, it is converted to the another form but it is not destroyed and the second law is that 
entropy is non increasing like there is a chaos over the uh, in the ecosystem uh, when we go uh, from one tropic level to another tropic level so this is how the economies we if we are more dependent on the non renewable resources then uh, there is certainly problem at the end we will uh, going to have the problem in the environment so what is the neoclassical approach of the environmental economics so the natural resources as per neoclassical approach are essential factors of production that is very important to know that in any uh, country the country is rich or uh, poor it is dependent on its natural resources and natural resources are scarce it is not found any, everywhere like gold it's not found everywhere like petroleum natural gas they are not found everywhere so they are limited so the economic value of natural resources is determined by consumers preference so whenever there is more demand then the value increase when there is less demand the value decreases and these preferences are best expressed by a freely operating private market system so it is all about how the market works and how uh, all these things i mean decide the value of a natural resource like uh, when we go 20 years back nobody has thought that water as a natural resource could be bought uh, from the market in the pet bottles because water water everywhere and no uh, drop to drink it is uh, now at a uh, common like we have polluted our natural resources and certainly uh, our actions has raised the demand of the water into the market so the market price can be used as an indicator of resource scarcity so the petroleum prices are increasing day by day that is one of the example natural resource can always be replaced partially or fully by use of other resources that are manufactured or natural like uh, if we go for the fossil fuels we can replace the fossil fuel partially not fully by the renewable resources so it is all how it works but there are some resources that cannot be replaced like water there is no alternative for the water so we have to uh, be dependent fully on the water and technological advances continuously continually augment the scarcity of natural resources so uh, how the technology uh, has advanced so that all uh, augments the natural resource so the natural resource ecosystem is treated as being outside of the human economy and exogenously determined so if we discuss about the natural ecosystem that is an ecology or ecosystem natural ecosystem it is always discussed under this approach as an outside it is not integrated in our economy if it is integrated in our economy then certainly there will be more uh, environment friendly technologies or our lifestyle so what are the key issues about the neoclassical approach the first one is the market has provider provides uh, the market provides the information about the resource scarcity it is about all the market dependent how the demand increases decrease or the scarcity is known by the resource uh, substitution scarcity augmenting technology advance the nature of the relationship between the human economy and the natural environment so what are the ecological prospect use of that this is environmental uh, resources of biosphere are finite they are limited mutual interde uh, interde uh, interdependencies like everything is related to everything else like there is an interrelation there is a nexus between air water soil and the biosphere is characterized by continuous transformation of matter and energy material recycling is essential for the growth and revitalization of all systems of biosphere nothing remains constant but nature so everything is uh, transformed but or the period of time nature is the constant then and the human economy is a subsystem of biosphere like when we are going to discuss about the biosphere mainly we discuss about the three spheres like lithosphere hydrosphere and uh, 
atmosphere but there is another sub system like the human economy which is also a system but it works under the biosphere under the nature it is not an separate system so like this this is an ecosystem uh, in the biosphere we have the sunlight which has the main source of energy and there is the producers we produce many products and we go it goes to the consumers and there are many factors which uh, deals with the market uh, about the price of the food so this whole is an ecosystem in this ecosystem there is a subsystem that is an economy so there are some inputs and there are some outputs mm -hmm.